Every once in a while in science, there comes along a theory that creates an entire paradigm shift in that particular field. Danny Vindermini's Neanderthal predation hypothesis is not one of those theories, even though it purports to be. I discussed and debunked Danny Vindermini's theory in my very first YouTube video. Now, usually they say that YouTube videos get most of their views in the first month or so after they're posted, and while that often is the case, this video is more than a year and a half old, and it's gotten about 6,000 views just in the past couple months. Before then, it had only about 3,000 views, so this video still seems to be quite popular. I didn't really expect that many people to be interested in Danny's theory, but because it was my first YouTube video, it wasn't my best video. I still stand behind everything I said in the original video, but this new updated video should be better and more thorough than the original video was. The Neanderthal predation theory is essentially a theory that postulates that Neanderthals were actually scary monsters. According to Danny, they look nothing like what actual scientists claim they look like, and, in fact, they were very aggressive and hunted us nearly to extinction. And in the process, they also had a lot of non-consensual sex with our women. Now, Danny himself is not a scientist. He has no background in science. In fact, he's an Australian television producer. Now, I do believe that someone who has no background in science is fully capable of coming up with a valid scientific hypothesis. But in this case, that's not what happened. I bring up the fact that he is a television producer because the Neanderthal predation theory reminds me a lot of a cheesy science fiction television show or movie more than it does an actual scientific theory. Danny has never been able to get any of his theories published in a respected, peer-reviewed scientific journal, even though he has tried. Now, the peer-reviewed process is not perfect, but... The point of the peer review process is to keep garbage like Danny Vindermini's theory out of respected scientific journals, and you can say that the peer review process in this case has worked. Here are some of the many misleading reasons for why Danny Vindermini says that Neanderthals didn't really look the way scientists say they looked. There's a couple of things wrong with this picture. First, it's not based on any sound archaeological evidence. That's because soft tissue features like skin, hair, colour, and eyeballs are not preserved in the fossil record. Danny's claim that hair is not preserved in the fossil record is totally false. Danny wants us to believe that these Neanderthals really looked like scary gorilla monsters covered in fur. But fur actually does fossilize because it's not a soft tissue. There are species that go back millions of years in which we found evidence of fur because fur fossilizes. Neanderthals are not millions of years old. So when Danny goes around saying that fur doesn't fossilize, he's totally wrong. That's just not true. And this is why Danny could not get anything published in a peer-reviewed journal. Because in a peer-reviewed journal, his peers would say, hey, Danny, you do realize that fur actually does fossilize. The reason why real scientists know that Neanderthals didn't have fur is because we have not found any evidence of fossilized fur and because we have found a lot of evidence that Neanderthals actually sewed and made clothes. And when I say they made clothes, they did more than just collect animal skins. They actually sewed clothes they actually tailored clothes to their bodies, and they actually made footwear as well. In other words, they had very sophisticated clothes-making abilities. Danny making the totally erroneous claim that fur is soft tissue, which it's not, and therefore doesn't fossilize, is exactly the reason why real scientists don't take him seriously, and it's one of the many reasons why you should not take him seriously either. We also know that Europe was not in a state of constant glaciation when the Neanderthals lived, as Danny claims. Instead, the Neanderthals, for a few hundred thousand years, lived in Europe during an interglacial phase. 
During those times, the temperatures of Europe were no colder than they are today. So we know that Danny's claims that Neanderthals had to have had fur is absolute rubbish. Danny's ignorance of the climate is yet another reason why Danny is not published in any peer-reviewed scientific journal. Danny also tries to claim that part of the reason why the Neanderthals looked like gorillas and not so much like Homo sapiens is because Neanderthals were primates, and so are gorillas. Well, here's the problem. Homo sapiens, we are actually primates. So it doesn't make any sense to go around saying that Neanderthals are primates, therefore they looked like gorillas. Yes, gorillas are primates, but so are all humans. Danny Vindermini is a primate. So trying to make a case of saying, well, you know, the Neanderthals are primates, therefore they look like gorillas, doesn't make any sense. You could also make the argument that the Neanderthals are primates, therefore they look like Homo sapiens as well, because Homo sapiens are in fact primates. And that is yet another reason why Danny Vindermini cannot get this ludicrous theory published in any peer-reviewed scientific journal. Because during the peer-reviewed process, your peers would say, Hey Danny, you do realize that Homo sapiens are primates as well, so your argument that Neanderthals looked more like gorillas because gorillas are primates isn't valid since Homo sapiens are also primates. Another laughable aspect of Danny's theory is In his assertion that Neanderthals really looked like scary gorilla monsters, he tries to say that you could easily superimpose the top of a Neanderthal skull onto the head of a chimpanzee. But doing so completely ignores the position of the frame and magnum. This is the hole at the base of the skull where the spinal cord passes through. If the Neanderthal skull was really in the position that Danny claims it was in, that would mean that the Neanderthal's spinal cord would actually have to come out through the front of their neck, which doesn't make any sense. This is, again, why Danny Vindermini's theories are not taken seriously by actual scientists, because actual scientists do know something about anatomy, unlike Danny Vindermini. This is why he can't get this theory published in a real, respected, peer-reviewed science journal, because his peers would point out to him his mistakes in anatomy. Danny's theory gets more and more absurd. He eventually claims that Neanderthals were not only these scary gorilla monsters, but that they also ate us and had non-consensual sex with us and almost made us extinct. To support his theory, Danny points to the fact that there have been some reports of certain times in which Neanderthals committed cannibalism. And while it is true that we do have some evidence that Neanderthals sometimes, but pretty rarely, were cannibals, we also have more evidence of incidences in which Homo sapiens, our own species, in prehistoric times were cannibals. So we actually are more cannibalistic than the Neanderthals were. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense. We also do have evidence that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens did mate because most human beings who are not of African descent have some Neanderthal DNA in them. But that's actually a sign that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens are fairly closely related species. If you were to try to mate with a chimpanzee, you would not have offspring. In order for two species to mate and have offspring, which is what happened with the Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, these two species have to be fairly closely related. So that's actually evidence that the Neanderthals were far more closely related to us than they were related to gorillas or chimpanzees. Also, if it's true that Neanderthals really looked like scary Sasquatch, Bigfoot, or gorilla monsters, as Danny claims, then it's very unlikely that the Neanderthals would even be sexually attracted to us, and it's very unlikely that they would try to have consensual or non-consensual sex with us at all. Now, I've been told about times in which supposedly gorillas have sexually assaulted humans, but if this is the case, it's something that happens very rarely. 
But breeding in between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals is not something that happened rarely. It's something that happened all the time. And that's why virtually all humans who are not of African descent do have Neanderthal DNA. There is a lot of evidence that Neanderthals actually could talk the way we can talk and had language the way we have language. And that would make sense. That would explain why we probably interbred with them. It's unlikely that we would have interbred with them if they couldn't talk. It's also very likely that almost all of the sexual relations between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals were consensual relations. Although my original video on this topic does have more likes than dislikes, based upon many of the comments, there are a lot of people that really want to believe Danny Vendermini. I don't know why. The truth is, there are so many flaws in Danny Vendermini's theory that I couldn't possibly get into all of them here. I will say this, the reason why Danny Vendermini is not accepted amongst real scientists is not because of a conspiracy, it's because he doesn't deserve to be respected as a scientist. He's just a pseudoscientist, and the Neanderthal predation theory has all the hallmarks of pseudoscience. Like I said before, I do not believe that you need to have a background in science to come up with a scientific hypothesis that is valid. However, in Danny's case, he has not come up with a scientific hypothesis that is valid. The Neanderthal predation theory is just a bunch of rubbish. For someone like Danny Vendermini to be taken seriously, he should know certain things like the fact that fur actually does fossilize and that Homo sapiens are primates, but he doesn't seem to know these things. Instead, Danny gets nearly all of his facts wrong. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon for notifications, and together we shall take over the world. I upload six to eight videos a month on topics including science and evolution. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Zorkbid123.